Well, this Mother's Day is different for many, for some who are unable to see and hug their loved ones. But nonetheless, the meaning behind this day is the same. We honor the special women in our lives, our moms and mom-like figures, both past and present. We ask you to send in your photos, and here's some of the fantastic moms you are celebrating at home, including a few of the moms here at Creme 2. Good evening. It's good to have you here with us on this Mother's Day. I'm Tim Pham. We do want to start off by saying Happy Mother's Day. We hope you are surrounded with love on this special day. And while this is one of those holidays where the demand for bouquets and flowers are at an all time high, there was a concern this year if the plants would be able to get out because of the coronavirus. But as Creme 2's Brandon Jones explains how one shop in Spokane managed to salvage their day. It takes months of preparation just for this one day alone. Ritter's Garden and Gift grows around 90% of the plants they sell. In total, they have a little over 45,000 square feet, and by January, they're already thinking of the rush that'll come with Mother's Day. Like, oh my gosh, what is our spring going to look like? What's our Mother's Day going to look like? Because we didn't know. COVID-19 forced their business to make adjustments. That includes a website that's begun to house their products during the outbreak. Customers can now place their orders online and choose between delivery or curbside pickup, which according to them, it's been really interesting and it's been a huge learning curve. But recently they've been able to ease back into more of a traditional schedule that was just in time for their big weekend and was also a sigh of relief. Customers can walk through the garden portion and pick out plants on their own again. I think the biggest thing this year is that we were worried that people wouldn't be able to come in and like that was our biggest fear because there's something about coming in and choosing them yourself. They still have social distancing protocols in place throughout the store. The gift shop portion remains closed. The greenhouse and nursery, however, are open and the return of customers has been refreshing. This is like our Christmas. Mother's Day is something that we look forward to literally the entire year long. Like this is like, this is our game day, I guess. From Spokane, Brandon Jones, Crim2 News. Breaking news tonight, Vice President Mike Pence is self-isolating after an aide tested positive for the coronavirus last week. An administration official says Pence is voluntarily limiting his exposure and will work from home. He has repeatedly tested negative for COVID-19 since his exposure, but is following the advice of medical officials. Pence's move comes after three members of the White House's coronavirus task force placed themselves in quarantine after coming into contact with spokeswoman Kate Miller, Katie Miller, excuse me, who tested positive for the virus. Meanwhile, Governor Jay Inslee stressed the importance of opening things up slowly and safely based on scientific data. This weekend, he allowed curbside retail to reopen, but only for pickup orders. Here's what that means. Stores must be able to maintain a minimum of six feet between employees and customers and provide personal protective equipment for employees like gloves and masks. They also need to screen employees for symptoms of the virus. Well, as part of phase one of reopening, some parks and trails are back open with restrictions, of course. In our area, Mount Spokane, Palouse Falls and Riverside State Parks are included on that list. The Nine Mile Fall Recreation Area will also open, as well as the Spokane River Centennial State Park Trail. Meanwhile, more than 200 King County parks and trails are back open with restrictions. The county is encouraging visitors to keep keep it moving. People are asked to use the parks and trails for walking, running, riding and rolling, but not to gather in parking lots or trailheads. Officials say it's important for everyone to recreate responsibly and to keep their distance as they head outside. To find that list of parks that are reopened in Washington, you can head to creme.com. All right, to weather now, a beautiful Mother's Day, a little breezy, but overall a great day to get outside. Meteorologist Michelle Boss working from home tonight. Michelle, happy Mother's Day. Did your kiddos treat you to that breakfast we talked about last night? Yes, it was great. I did get breakfast this morning, pancakes, bacon, eggs, hash browns, so it was all good stuff, and it was it was from McDonald's, so they didn't make a mess in the kitchen. So I was excited about that. And of course, the weather has been just beautiful out there, even though, okay, it's on the windy side. I still went outside and soaked in the sunshine. Let's take a look outside and see how those breezes are stacking up across the inland northwest. Right now, current wind speed anywhere between 10 and 20 miles per hour in the Spokane Coeur d'Alene. Deer Park and Sandpoint area winds are out of the northeast. It's relatively breezy elsewhere. A Pullman
Inland St. Mary's must go not too bad out there with the wind. Some of the wind gusts over the last hour, about 20 to 25 miles per hour. We could see even windier conditions tomorrow, so we are going to have to contend with the wind for another day, but very mild temperatures out there in the 80s from Omac down into Moses Lake in the Tri-Cities, and very comfortable in the low 70s from Sandpoint through Coeur d'Alene down through the Palouse and the 80s as you get down into Lewiston. On satellite and radar right now, mostly sunny skies for most of the inland northwest. You're seeing a few radar returns across south central and far southeastern Washington. Washington. So far, no precipitation reports, and none of that should make its way up into our region this evening. So it's looking good for the evening. It's going to stay breezy throughout the evening and overnight hours with partly to mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures slipping down into the low 60s by 9 p.m., so still very mild. Overnight lows will only bottom out in the upper 40s. One more nice, breezy, mild day on Monday, and then showers return on Tuesday. We take a big drop in temperatures, highs only in the mid-50s, and it looks like unsettled weather for the rest of the week. A chance of showers, maybe even some thunderstorms on Wednesday with highs in the lower 60s. Tim. All right, Michelle Boss, thank you. Looking ahead now, we have a traffic alert to pass along. Construction is resuming on the northbound lanes of US 195 that merges with I-90. This will start back up on Tuesday morning. WashDOT says work will begin from 6.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. and again from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. every weekday. Well, big changes are coming to SeaTac International Airport. The Port of Seattle says starting next week, all visitors and employees will be required to wear a cloth face covering. The new guidelines will officially begin on May 18th and will be in place until further notice. SeaTac says they want to send a clear message that the airport wants people to feel safe and that they're looking out for people's well-being. Like so many, the airport has been hit hard by the economic effects of this pandemic. Right now, SeaTac says it's seeing just under 4,000 passengers a day, and that's down from 50,000 people they'd normally see this time of year. The airport says it has gotten financial assistance from the feds, about $192 million as part of the CARES Act. The airport says it's currently working to decide how to use those funds. The Port of Seattle commissioners plan to meet on Tuesday where they'll be briefed on the airport's recovery plan. So in that plan, they'll talk about a program called Fly Health at SeaTac. That program will require everything from security to putting spaces in between seats. The airport says they'll look at new health initiatives and public policy, all looking to restore confidence in air travel. Washington state leaders are hoping to clear the backlog of 265,000 initial unemployment claims. They said they're hoping to clear them by mid-June. Of those backlogs, about 187,000 need to either sign up for pandemic unemployment assistance or file weekly claims. Those claims will receive emails about next steps. About 57,000 backlog claims are stuck in adjudication. If you have applied for unemployment but haven't gotten paid yet, here are a few tips. File a weekly claim for each week you are unemployed. Check your email spam filter for ESD messages and be prepared with all of your necessary information when you're making a claim. You can also text the word unemployment to 509-448-2000. We'll send you a helpful link with some tips to navigate unemployment. Several child care facilities have closed in Spokane County amid the pandemic as more people start returning to work. Many families are left wondering what they'll do for child care. Crem 2's Amanda Rowley looked into which facilities are still open and what they need in order to provide this service. Before the response to COVID-19, Spokane's child care system was already stressed due to the great need for child care. Our wait list is at any given time uh, between 40 to, to 100, especially when you're counting school ages. Owner of Parkview Early Learning Center in North Spokane, Luke Jasmine, expects things to get even worse because of COVID-19. That is, unless providers can reopen or more funding is made available. I don't know how much longer we can realistically go. So uh, even the places that are open right now, uh, without any type of assistance, um, it, this, this will be a lot worse. Child Care Aware of Washington reports 94 child care programs in Spokane County have shut down. In the city of Spokane, a total of 78 programs closed. The nonprofit organization says some of the providers will never reopen, but it is working to help them survive this pandemic and prepare them for reopening when parents go back to work. What are we going to do? 
when everyone starts going back to work. So this affects us all. Luke is also the president of the Washington Child Care Centers Association. He says capacity limitations, lack of financial support, and now low enrollment rates are all factors in many program closures. Meantime, he suggests contacting your legislators and Governor Inslee. It's plain and simple. We need to buckle down and make sure that investments in early learning is a priority. What are you reading about? The Washington Department of Child, Youth and Families gave CRIM2 a list of open and closed licensed child care providers in Spokane County. If your family is in need of child care, you can ask for this list by texting the word child care to 509-448-2000. Amanda Rowley, CRIM2 News. Well, if you're looking for more child care help, the Child Care Aware of Washington Family Center has expanded its operations. You can call that number there at the bottom of your screen and they can help you track child care opening and closures throughout the state. Well, for some of us, it's hard to go back home, especially if you are a service member working overseas. So they sent in videos to send their mom some love this holiday. This one is from deployed Navy Lieutenant Jennifer Cunningham, who wants to give a big shout out to her mother in Bremerton, Washington. Hi, my name is Lieutenant Jennifer Cunningham, and I'm serving at Camp Lemonade in the Horn of Africa. I want to wish my mother, Kay McLean, in Bremerton, Washington, a happy Mother's Day. I love you and thank you for everything you do for us. 